Stellantis, the heavyweight player in the automotive world, is facing a major crisis. The signs of something being off are clear and the company is scrambling to find its way forward. With some severe reductions impacting operations, the big question is whether these moves can help Stellantis and its crown jewels, Ram and Jeep, navigate through the turbulence. Let's dive into what's going on, why the company is in hot water, the strategies it's rolling out, and what options lie ahead. CEO Carlos Tavares is about to be fired, and the group's chairman, John Elkin, is now urgently searching for a successor. The timing of this shakeup is puzzling to many observers, as the company had a profitable 2023, despite ongoing industry challenges such as supply chain issues, labor strikes, and economic fluctuations. In fact, Stellantis saw satisfying sales results in the United States last year, with its brands like Jeep and Ram maintaining solid market shares. However, 2024 has been a different story. Profits have plummeted by 30%, even though the company increased prices across many of its models. These hikes have not been well received by customers who have voiced frustrations about paying more for vehicles that, in their eyes, lack the innovation and quality they expect. It seems Stellantis' decision to raise prices in the face of a competitive downturn is backfiring. In response to the financial slump, the company has been aggressively cutting costs. Hundreds of workers have been let go, including positions in critical areas for any modern automaker, such as engineering, tech, and software divisions. Stellantis is looking to replace these roles with lower-paid engineers from overseas. While this may reduce labor costs, it raises concerns about the quality and innovation of future products. The sudden departure of executives from the company is another sign of instability. With many high-level leaders leaving, the overall morale at Stellantis seems to be diminishing. Now, with Tavares out and a successor yet to be named, the future direction of the company is more uncertain than ever. The downfall of Stellantis can be traced to deeper issues than just the missteps of 2024. At its core, the company's product lineup has become increasingly uncompetitive. While some individual models like the Jeep Grand Cherokee continue to perform relatively well, they are the exception rather than the rule. Even Jeep's other iconic nameplate, the Wrangler, has struggled in recent years. Once a symbol of rugged reliability and adventure, the Wrangler now faces mounting complaints about build quality and reliability. It remains afloat mainly due to its brand name and loyal fan base, but cracks are beginning to show. Newer models like the Gladiator and Grand Wagoneer initially sparked excitement when they debuted, but that enthusiasm quickly fizzled. Customers and critics have pointed out that these vehicles lack the refinement, quality, and innovation needed to compete with rival offerings from brands like Ford, GM, and Toyota. In short, Stellantis vehicles, particularly those in the Jeep and Ram brands, are not meeting the high standards of today's discerning consumers. Ram trucks, which enjoyed a brief revival a few years ago, are also losing ground. The problem began when Stellantis rebranded Dodge's truck division into Ram and continued to churn out essentially the same vehicles with few significant updates. In the case of Dodge, the discontinuation of popular models like the Dart, Charger, and Challenger, has left a gaping hole in the lineup. While these cars weren't necessarily groundbreaking in terms of technology or innovation, they had a dedicated fanbase and represented a rare bright spot for the brand. With these models gone, Stellantis lacks a true flagship product that excites customers and sets it apart from its competitors. The manufacturer is noticeably absent from the hottest-selling automotive segment in the US, compact crossover class. With consumers increasingly gravitating towards these vehicles for their blend of practicality, fuel efficiency, and versatile interior space, Stellantis's lack of representation in this market could hinder its growth prospects. While the Jeep Compass is a part of lineup, it falls short in size, being too small for many families and buyers looking for a more spacious interior. On the other hand, the Grand Cherokee is the right choice for those seeking a larger SUV, but its size can be a stumbling block for urban driving and parking. As Stellantis focuses on other vehicle types, such as trucks and SUVs, it risks losing market share to manufacturers that are agile and responsive to changing consumer demands. Competitors like Toyota, Honda, and Ford have capitalized on this trend, offering attractive options such as the RAV4, CRV, and Escape, covering a diverse range of buyers. Overall, the downfall is the result of outdated models, a lack of innovation, and an over-reliance on brand loyalty. In an industry where consistent improvement is key, Stellantis seems to be playing catch-up instead of leading the charge. The path forward for the company is anything but clear. 
The leadership crisis is further complicated by the potential appointment of Eric Laforge, the current head of European operations as the new CEO. While Laforge has a solid track record in Europe, he may not be the ideal candidate to solve Stellantis problems in the US market, a main battleground where the company is currently struggling. One of the first things the new boss will need to fix is the design. Let's face it, many vehicles are ugly. Plain designs may save costs in the short term, but they also fail to attract buyers, especially in a competitive market like the US, where consumers expect both style and substance in their vehicles. While the decision to source engineers from overseas may offer fresh talent, these designers need to understand the unique preferences and demands of American drivers. Simply producing cost-effective styling won't cut it in a market that thrives on innovation, boldness, and driving experience. If this doesn't help, Stellantis will be forced to begin selling off some of its brands. Jeep, arguably the most valuable asset, is drawing the most attention. The list of potential buyers is short, but significant. General Motors seems to be the most likely suitor, as acquiring Jeep would allow GM to solidify its dominance in the off-road and SUV markets. Ford is less likely to get involved, as the company already enjoys the success of Bronco and other off-road capable vehicles, and the Blue Oval Company may not see the value in taking on Jeep's current lineup, which needs substantial reinvestment to remain competitive. Some industry insiders have floated Volkswagen as a potential buyer. The idea of German-engineered made-in-America Jeeps might attract a lot of interest. What's more, Volkswagen has been actively seeking to expand its presence in the US market, especially in truck segments. Acquiring Ram lineup is the perfect opportunity for the German automaker to make a significant breakthrough. However, any such acquisition must be carefully considered. Lessons can be learned from Mercedes-Benz's ill-fated purchase of Chrysler in the late 1990s. What was once hailed as a transformative partnership quickly turned into a nightmare, with Chrysler's American operation spiraling into decline under German management. If Stellantis does decide to sell Jeep and Ram, it could be the first step in a broader dismantling of the company. Other brands like Chrysler and Dodge are not so valuable. The automotive world is watching closely to see how Stellantis navigates this turbulent period, but one thing is clear, the company cannot afford to continue on its current path. At the same time, there's a possibility that Stellantis may attempt to weather the storm by doubling down on its current operations. If this is the case, the new CEO will need to make bold moves to reinvigorate the lineup, attract new talent, and repair the company's damaged reputation. It won't be an easy task, but with the right leadership and strategic investments, there is still hope for a Stellantis comeback. What do you think about the company's potential downfall? Would Ram and Jeep be missed if they were sold off? And who do you think should take the reins of these iconic brands? Let's hear your thoughts in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to share it with fellow car enthusiasts and subscribe for more updates on the latest automotive news and industry insights.